And welcome back to part 16. 16 parts. Eight hours. Holy roly. Um, <laughs> this is taking a while, but it's okay. That's what this is for. Got you a little bit more of an extreme angle today, but we'll be zooming in on this area right here, which is what we're working on. Um, so I didn't think that would be as bad. That way I can get you guys a little bit closer. Um, right now you have, uh, let's see, can I show this? Not really. Oh, maybe I can. Um, so the area that I'm working on right now is that area right there, the basically the hub of the wheel and, uh, you know, the other things that are going on there. So we're going to try to finish up, not finish up this, this area, but that's what we're working on. So that way, as I get that done, I can move on, but I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't just explain. I should just do it because that's what we're here for. So let me get you guys in real close. And about there, make sure we're focused as best we can. There we go. Okay. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in a lot of the really darkest areas first, just to kind of draw them in um, and then and then go from there. I think that's that's going to be the, the, the way to go with this. Uh, and then I'll work on the spokes and the idea is to get the whole the whole wheel done. So I'm just going to grab some black here. And let me go with uh, something a little bit thinner. So this is going to be one to ten or 10 to 1 mix on the Createx. So it's Createx Wicked Opaque Black, one part paint to 10 parts reducer. Um, I went over this in my um, um, Mixology uh, Tech Tuesday, um, and it was brought up, um, and the, the point was, was extremely valid. I use this system that says 1 to 10, but I go by weight, not by volume, and that does affect it. So it's not, it's technically not one part paint to 10 parts uh, reducer, because a reducer is, is lighter, is a lighter material um, but it the point is of the video is it gives me a consistent repeatable mixture so even though this isn't technically one to ten it's what I call one to ten and every time I mix it I get the same material so it was a great point brought up that you know it's different when you go by weight or by volume um, so I just thought I'd, I'd throw that out there in case you mixed the mixed the mixology <laughs> missed the mixology video all right so this brush was cranky earlier, so we'll hope that it's not cranky right now. We'll try it out. Nope, it's good. Okay, good. You guys are close. So what I'm doing is I'm using the HD stencil and just filling in the areas that are the darkest. And then I'll refine the details as we go. The details here are just, you guessed it, more rusty metal. So, um, so I don't have to worry too, too much about getting... Um, getting black paint on that because it, it's kind of a, you know, like I said, it's worn and rusty and that kind of thing. Even this blue that I left on the, the that's the bottom of the wheel or the inside of the, the wheel itself is like a dull gray. So getting a little bit of black on that's not going to hurt. In fact, it'll, it'll help in the end because that's what's going to happen. So I chose the one to 10 because it's, it allows me to get some really, really super fine details and controlled edges but still allows me to kind of get get this um, dark if I need to I could go with the one to five it would do the job a little bit faster it would get me there a little bit quicker but um, but again with this we're already eight hours into this painting or in the eighth hour right now um, it doesn't need to be done really fast so the problem with working fast is it opens up more chance for there to be mistakes and what what is sometimes a good thing meaning get it done faster can be just the opposite you end up having to fix a lot more and it takes you longer in the end than if you're just kind of taking your time in the beginning and i keep saying you but i mean me <laughs> you guys are doing fine so again all the dark areas leaving all the now these lighter areas are not that light they've got a lot of stuff going on with them um, so again so i'm not overly worried if i get some black on that because they're going to be kind of um, pushed back anyway. So I was looking at this photograph, and I think I've mentioned this before in this series. Um, it, you know, it pops up with the reference photo. It pops up with the details on when I took this, and I took this photograph the day after my birthday in 2014. So it shows you how long this photo has been kind of floating around in my 
archives waiting to be painted. And uh, that happens a lot. What's nice is with an older, obviously this bike is timeless. It'll be like this forever, really. So it doesn't matter when I actually painted it. It's not like I, it's a brand new car and I kind of need to be timely in a way. Uh, this was going to hang around for as long as it needed to hang around for. And uh, there's a lot of stuff like that in, in the uh, photo archi archives that I have which is nice. There's never a, you know, an instance where I don't have something to paint. I have so many different reference photos from so many different things. It's just, uh, it's just nice. I'm telling you this painting is therapeutic. I know it doesn't, may not seem like it. It may seem like total nitpicky craziness, but, um, I do a lot of really like the weekly quick paintings, the five weekly quick paintings. And those are like a fire drill to get those done. Um, and they're limited, you know, they're when you only have a couple hours to do each one and it's self-imposed, but still you only have a couple hours to do each one. Um, and you have to leave stuff out because you'll never get it done in time. If you don't, um, this painting is just like a sanctuary. I can just take as long as I want and get everything perfect and not leave anything out. It's just, it just really, helps me set my mind back to where it should be because ultimately for me as an artist you know these are the paintings that I want to be remembered for these are the paintings that I want to last forever I really love doing those quick paintings those are a blast and I'm so happy that so many people get to enjoy them because they are done so quick that I'm able to offer them for a lot less than what say this painting would go for so it opens up and plus just a lot more of them so uh, so that helps people collect them as well. Um, but this is, this is the painting. These type of paintings are what I really want to leave behind, essentially. So it is a lot of fun. Okay, so this little section down here, this is the inside of this wheel well here. So I want to um, kind of start to darken that up. There's a nice shade on that as it transitions to the darker steel color. So first I'll start with that little shade to kind of get rid of that templated um, feel. And this is blue, bluish, but I, I, I well, the ultimate color is like a blue, steel blue, like the top up near the, like this up here. But for now, I'm just kind of laying in the dark and I'll just tint it with blue at some point. And um, I'll do the same thing across the board with this again, because these are not in the shadow, but they're down they're kind of pushed down in the light so um, so I can tint more than like some of the in your face areas like the, the forks and everything are right in your face so I can't really I have to paint those exactly the color that they are it's tough to tint that but this down here where it's kind of shifting between blues and the rusty steel and then that that grayish or brownish steel um, I can bounce around a little bit between the two there's also a nice hard edge on the edge of this brake rotor. Or no, the, this is actually the, the hub of the wheel, sorry. Um, there's a nice sharp edge. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna first spray in the gray and I'm gonna get the other side here. And then I'm gonna clean it up with the knife. So I'm gonna actually scratch out the edge. Do that right now. And it's a balancing act between the two. First of all, I gotta find my knife. There it is. Okay. So it's a balancing act between the two uh, two techniques. For the airbrush, has a really soft edge. This knife has the hardest edge that you can come up with with a painting. So I I could do one of two things. I could use the knife here, but I could also go back in and paint the edge. Use a light, you know, like a light blue to kind of reclaim that edge. But this method works really well because I'm not building up a bunch of paint here. I just really want to kind of, like I said, reclaim that that sharper edge. And then when I go to repaint over this, um, I, I don't have, you know, just a ton of paint built up. Not that it builds up a whole lot of paint here, but uh, but still, it's it's nice this way. Because I, I can tint now this, this sharp line instead of, um, you know, messing with the paintbrush. 
There is another sharp line on the other side, but I haven't extended this out far enough yet, so I'm going to hold off on that. But it was good that I got to show you that a little bit. This whole, again, this whole area is like a steel blue, so I'm going to tint that afterwards. So I just kind of go back in with the black now and give it a little bit of a softening up. And again, that's the balance. That's the back and forth between the two, you know, the airbrush and then the, whatever other tool you choose to use, paintbrush or airbrush, I mean, um, knife. So now I can start filling in the hub here where the spokes kind of emanate from. I could also do this all. I could kind of lay all this in with a paintbrush too, which I'm going to have to tighten it up with a paintbrush a little bit. But again, it's, it's, you know, personal, I guess it's personal call. It's whatever you feel like doing at this point, because you're kind of in there tight. Yeah, you're in a good spot. Um, you're kind of in there tight and uh, you're going to need, I'm going to need to use both anyway. So this just kind of, um, Let's me kind of, again, lets me kind of bounce around. It's why this painting is so much fun. Just like the, uh, the Island Creek painting I did, the painting of the creek. Um, it was just nice to be able to just paint, you know, not wrestle with, you know, with, with process. It was just a, it was just a, an exercise in kind of getting it done when it gets done. So that was good. All right, I get cut off here a little bit, so I don't actually see everything that I'm seeing there. So I gotta, here we go, that's better. And all the spokes, I'm gonna leave the spokes till after. Um, kind of a special animal. And the nice thing is the spokes are on the top of like the wheel hub and everything. So I can afford to do those after. I don't have to do them now. If I did them now, I'd have to paint around them, which is, you know, a little bit more difficult than to just, like when I go, I'll just, especially on the, the brighter ones, I'll scratch those out nice and straight and they'll be done. Well, not done, but, you know, mostly done. So again, and I say it, I've said it before and I'll say it again, thank you for kind of hanging out with me with this. This is, this video isn't like anything that I've seen on YouTube and I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I love them. I love watching other artists work and uh, I have a lot of favorites that are non-artists, you know, channels that I watch. Um, and this idea of kind of showing you everything on the painting from top to bottom, beginning to end is so unlike the trend that's going on right now. Dare I say the TikTok trend <laughs> where everything has to be 15 seconds and everything has to be, you know, blasted in your face. So this is as opposite of that as you can possibly get. There's no cuts, there's no edits, there's no none of that. It's it's you guys are seeing it as if you're sitting here in the studio with me and we're drinking coffee and shooting the shit. So I shouldn't have said that. That was a bad word. But you get the idea. Um, we're just hanging out and painting. So it's such it's it's a different thing. It's a, there like I said there are no edits, there are no speed ups there's no okay here's how i do this now i'm going to show it to you after it's all done this is it you guys get everything so again for those who are watching and enjoying this i really appreciate this this was an exercise in something new and um i mean i certainly enjoy it because i'm working on this painting anyway and what's also nice about this is it actually forces me to work on this painting because i have to put up a new episode every week and this painting is you know, it's not, it's, it's one of the ones that's just going to be up on the site. No one commissioned it or anything. So as soon as there's something that doesn't need to be done, like right away, that's the first one that gets pushed back on the schedule. And um, because now this has a need to happen every week, it's, it's, it's getting done, which is amazing. All right, so there is... There is a couple braces here that are really sharp and they're on the background. So I don't want to just freehand those in. I would need to, well, let's paint them in. Let's, I'll show you that kind of thing too. So again, with the paintbrush, it works, works really well. Um, and again, depending on what I'm working on, then it's, it'll either be the knife or the paintbrush. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a um, kind of a brownish color to kind of get this set. Now there is a the bottom of this. Now this is really thin and that's okay uh, because I'm going to be airbrushing on top of this. What I'm using the paintbrush to do is to set the edges for me. So where the edges are difficult to paint extremely clean without a template the paintbrush can do that. So if I set the edges with the paintbrush and I can go in and shade it with the airbrush and again get the strengths from both. Now the it's the outside edge of this so the, the face part that's facing out that's uh, what you can see. The rest of it is pretty pretty light so I'm going to kind of go for this line. So I want to make sure I have my arm moving or room to move. But first can do that. Yep, I can. I'm just gonna throw on the uh, dirty art glove. I'm gonna keep my fingers off this part of it here, so I don't want to get any finger oil on that. So what I do is I kind of I gotta make this one swoop nice and clean. So what I want to do is, um, and I've I've fallen in this trap all the time, and I actually learned this from my pinstriping buddies. I would normally just like kind of focus on the spot and start painting, but not realizing that as I start my hand, it's uncomfortable for my hand to move up here because my fingers are all jammed together. So what you end up doing is you start essentially at the back of the line. So see how I move my pinky up like this? That's where the line's going to end. And now I can extend down to this. So when I do this line, I have the full motion. My, my pinky isn't moving. I'm not getting jammed up. And that produces a cleaner line. So I'll show you what I mean here. And you can also like practice it too. You can run through it to kind of make sure you're in the right spot and it's going to work. Like that. That's first pass. Second pass cleans it up a little bit. And again, this is going to have a little bit of airbrushing on it too. So I just keep kind of running over it until I get it smoothed out the way it should be. So there's an inner one here too, which I want to grab as well. Um, yeah, it looks like it's metal. It's so neat to, I wish I was more familiar with this bike so I really understood what I was looking at. And what I'll do is, because I'm spending so much time on this, this painting, um, eventually I'll, I'll look up the bike and you know really kind of get down the parts. But the other side of it too is it's fun in a way not knowing exactly what these are and it allows me to turn off my brain and just paint what's there. If I know what that piece really looks like, especially from the side, I'll ha it'll change the way I kind of perceive it and uh, I'll sometimes try to force it into what I think it is more than what, what I can see. So uh, there are advantages to both knowing and not knowing. A little bolt here since i am got the paintbrush. Same thing with this guy. There's the nut itself is probably stainless because it's totally clean, but the inside post that it is screwed onto is rusty, so it's fun. And the same thing here, I'll just, since this is dry now down here, I'll just kind of hit it again because that paint is so thin it goes on very transparently. And this actually scoops up into here too, so there we go. Uh, and one quick one. I'm going to, uh, I should turn this around, but I'm not going to. The other edge of this, uh, like I said, the top of this is pretty light, but the other edge of this is dark. So we'll put that in now, make it a little bit easier. There we go. Good. So that kind of set that in. So now I can take the airbrush again. Remember, the airbrush still has just black in it. Uh, now that's a, that brownish color that um, I used uh, burnt uh, raw umber, sorry, raw umber and black to get that. Raw umber is my one of my favorite colors, just so usable in all instances. So now I can go in with the airbrush, especially down in here where I just did the outline. And it's just like cutting in a room when you're painting it. You do all the edges with the paintbrush and then you do the rest of it with the roller. It's the same theory with the airbrush, but just on a, a much smaller scale. So the airbrush can't really get tight on those 
edges, but if the edges are already in, you just paint up to them and you're good to go. I'm going to give it a little bit of shading on this too as it comes around and bolts in. And then this guy here, this strut is, um, is darker, so I'm just going to airbrush over it. And the same thing, I've, I'm tinting that down. So I've got the burnt umber there that I painted with a paintbrush. It was kind of, um, you can see the paintbrush strokes. When I go over with the airbrush, it just smooths all that out and knocks them right out. Okay. Then I could do two. I could get the, the uh, brown tone in with a lot of these pieces right now. And actually I won't. I was going to just kind of drop them in, but that's got a little bit lighter tone to it than that umber color. So instead of having to fight back from that, we'll leave it like that. But this whole area here, now that I've got the detail in, actually I don't. Let's put some paintbrush work in there because I can really tighten up those details in this area here now. Same way. Just want to grab the edges, the edges that are tough for the airbrush to do. Corners of bolts and straight edges and things like that. Like here, there's a nice edge as it transitions. So we'll get those in with the paintbrush and then and move on from there. Some sort of bracket here. And I'm sure, I'm sure every little bit and piece of this bike has a name. And I apologize to the people who are true vintage Harley guys and girls um, that I don't have all the names of all the parts. But there's something, definitely something to be said for, you know, getting those parts right, even though I don't know the actual definition of every single bit and piece. It's important to get them in the way they really are. So I don't want to mess around with painting in something that, you know, doesn't really look like what it's supposed to. And that comes from uh, doing a lot, beginning, you know, when I started doing a lot of painting I did a lot of aviation art and you learn that quickly with the aviation guys they uh, they know what they're looking at and they uh, will let you know if you don't have something right that's for sure okay so these are just the random hard edges that are in here so that kind of locks those in So now, what I should do, let me get that tan color in. So way back, uh, I knew that I'd be using that rust color a lot. I had mentioned that. Um, so I mixed up a bunch of the rust color beforehand, and it was in way back when I first started this. Um, so what's convenient is I have that rust color ready to go. And I remember this is, um, I should have marked this because, I mean, it's the only color I have like it, so I know what it is. But um, still, it's always good to mark the bottles. Um, but again, I also know that this is 100%. There's nothing in this. I just mixed the color. So to mix this up, let me do this without the airbrush hooked up. So to mix this up, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a drop of paint on the inside of the cup of the brush. Unless this is all backed up. I mean dried up. Yep, it is. What do you know? Well, this is going to be more interesting. Ay, let me get this off here. What do you know? Okay, I'm going to have to do this a little bit differently. So normally, I'll, I'll clean that out after. That's not something that we all need to watch me do. Clean out the bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paintbrush and get a little bit of this, this paint, essentially. And I'm going to put it on the inside of the color cup here like that. So it's not down the bottom. It's right on the inside edge. That way when I go to reduce it, and for this I'm going to use the 1 to 5 mix. It's one part 40-50 uh, gloss UVLS from 
Createx and the 4011 reducer. So now I'm going to add the reducer, and that's going to go right down to the bottom of the cup. Add a few drops of that. So the, what happens there is the, the easier part to mix is the reducer. So now I can mix the paint into that reducer. If I just drop the, bottom, the drop into the bottom, then I have to pull all that paint back up, and that really won't give me a great mix. So now a lot of artists will only mix their paints in other containers and then pour them into the airbrush. That works too, but when you're dealing with just a drop, literally I'm dealing with like maybe six drops of material here, um, you can't transfer that. If you mix six drops in a cup, it's going to basically line the inside of the cup and you won't ever get in the airbrush. So this is a good way to do it. And just make sure it's really well mixed. And this one's good to go. But this rust color is neat because it's like a, like a, a light chocolate color. And this is perfect for, well, it's perfect because it was made for it, but you get the idea. Okay. So for this area here, um, I'm just going to kind of uh, lightly spray in those lighter areas. I don't care about the darker areas that already have paint on them because this is such a transparent color. All I'm doing is tinting those light colors, those light areas. I may have added too much reducer too. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, there is. It's a bit too much reducer, but I think I can work with this. So when, it's, when there's too much reducer and too much 40, 50, it just becomes too transparent. It takes too long to build it up, but um, it will build up. So I just have to be patient with it, which would be, which would be perfect for this video. There it is. So, there, so that you kind of see it building up now. It gives it that kind of tan color. I just want to avoid the bottom parts where it's blue. But I will, you'll see when I do it, I'll tint those areas the same way. And that's what I was saying before. You know, since I'm working with the black down in here where it's going to be blue, um, I don't have to really be super careful about it um, because th that tinting process will just take care of all of it. So the, you know, the other way to do it is to actually paint that in with the actual color but uh but in this instance it just goes a lot faster because i can then you know tint larger areas now this has opacity to it too so as i'm painting on the black it's actually turning the black kind of milky but that's okay because i'll be going back in with the airbrush anyway with the black this just sets the the rust color overall And I just noticed um, there's some great texture on this too. So I thought I'd have this section done for this video, but it's not. We're gonna pick up on the next, um, the next video, we're gonna keep working on this spot. We're gonna add the texture into both these sections, this strut and, um, and the other part. So I, and I'll do that before I add the black. So I'll show you how that works uh, on the next episode. All right, there we go. So that looks like a good spot to stop it here. Um, so if you're enjoying this, I go, camera's moving, sorry. <laughs> if you're enjoying this, please consider liking, and subscribing and clicking that bell icon. And um, the uh, open studio happens every Wednesday um, without, without you know, any kind of variation. So uh, while it's nice to have your bell icon clicked because you'll be reminded of it, um, you can always check back on Wednesday for a new episode of Open Studio. Uh, keep in mind, Tuesday is Tech Tuesday, and then Thursday is actually Live Feed Thursday. So you can actually come in and hang out with me while we paint live and interact, and it's a lot of fun. So if you have any questions about this episode, just drop them in the comments. Um, I appreciate you all. You guys are amazing. Thanks for hanging out with me, too. And uh, I will catch you guys all on the next one.